face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what is up you guys and of course welcome to an episode of the Who Was Really Better. Now before going to this video, I do want to say I'm sorry for not uploading this video last week. It is actually due to a beer event with my daughter who got baptized, I believe it's called. Uh, in church, which really took a lot of time to, you know, we're planning and making food and whatnot for the relatives coming. And quite frankly, I just didn't find the time to um, do in this. And also, of course, with work in mind, that kind of got damaged too. So, you know, priorities are basically Pokemon lost. And, uh, well, here we are uploading this today, uh, one week late instead. But I hope you guys do understand. Uh, I will try from here on out to find a way to upload battles and, of course, this type of episode more regularly uh we have really talked about this because i do believe pokemon is falling behind and i kind of need this uh i really do appreciate you guys of course supporting me but quite frankly i'm doing this also to kind of relax myself uh in between of course work and you know everything that is family related to just get my head clear of anything and uh, this is definitely helping and i believe i need to do stuff like this to kind of recover from everything around me that said we're going to look upon Crawdont versus Kingler, which are two Pokemon that was regarded as really bad from the get-go. Kingler has never necessarily been good, while Crawdont got a big of a boost actually in Generation 4 with the physical special split. Kingler got that too, but lacked the stab to pull that off. Crawdont has been reliantly good due to this, but like I said here, they were both bad from the beginning, and that said, Kingler got a huge boost in Generation 7 in Liquidation, which made these two Pokemon really, really interesting to compare, because their viabilities are pretty close to one another, even though this tier says otherwise. So, with this in mind, we're going to go over their stats, movement, and overarching theme to find out which one of these two really are better. And of course, we're going to start with the Pokemon introduced first, being Kingler. Now, Kingler, of course, is a soul water type. That already makes it a good defensive typing from the get-go. Really are nothing to it. Kingler resists the fire, ice, stab, steel, uh, water, and are only weak to electric and grass. And quite frankly, those are easy to parry and uh, usually are needed to because Kingler, of course, doesn't necessarily have all the bulk it needs, but it is a superb wall breaker. As you guys look upon the stats there, you guys see that there's a low HP of 55, special attack and special defense are 50, so definitely on the low side, even though special attack are usable due to its abilities, we're going to talk about a little later on. Uh, 75 and its speed is actually fairly all right. Uh, it does allow it to outspeed regular walls, and quite frankly, uh, as a wall breaker, 75 is very decent, being able to outspeed you know, regular base 70, which is always a good thing. 130 in attack, yeah, this is where Kingler really does kind of shine, because 130 in attack means there really aren't that many things that switches into this Pokemon, and of course with Stab in mind, it really doesn't necessarily help. And 115 in defense means that it has matchup, it can actually uh, survive, and of course with uh, any type of setup in mind, it can use that into actually counter deck the Pokemon's play as a whole. So overall, Killer's standard vision is really, really fair. Um, but as stated, it was for the longest time pretty much unusable because it didn't necessarily have the moves to get used to these stabs really well with the mind, definitely with the stance in mind of 100 for the attack. This is changing generation 7, but in generation 4 is where it all started, where it was really reliant that Kingler wasn't necessarily that threatening because it didn't have the moves to hurt as hard. Of course, from generation 1 to 3, it was not even usable because, quite frankly, special attack at 50 and surface your stab. Nah, that's that's not gonna happen. One big flaw of Kingler is it never had a waterfall, which is the main reason it never really was a good Pokemon for the get-go, because it was heavily relied on Crab Hammer that didn't use its hidden abilities, and uh, we're gonna actually talk about them right now. Because from the get-go here, Kingler had only Hyper Cutter and uh, Shell Armor. Shell Armor was fair, not being critted, and Hyper Cutter meant that no Intimidator could push it back. But it wasn't until Sheer Force was introduced in Generation 5 where Kingler got a fair niche. However, it was pretty much shut down from the get go because Crab Hammer, which was its main stab, never really was a um, secondary move that was boosted by, of course, the further free boost that is included in Sheer Force, making, well, to be honest, 
the hybrid cutter for the longest time still the best ability for it that all changed with liquidation this generation it means all of a sudden it did hurt and it did hurt quite a lot actually and together with likes of body slam it did a fair amount of damage share force is now the most usable ability to it and of course it has while necessarily nothing on the ice side to actually hit something it does have ice beam and stuff like that so special move pool are to be intrigued if they have a secondary effect and of course the king represents just that so with that said we're of course going to go over its or our king move pool because this pokemon while necessarily not having the biggest move pool it has an interesting one because well basically it gets all the setup moves if it feels like so first and foremost with metal claw which is boosted by of course the sheer force stomp the same thing crab hammer all of course filled Ice Beam and Blizzard, yeah, Sheer Force Boosted really makes them usable and well, for the mana, it actually works kind of right. Definitely is a good move if you're facing against, of course, the Lights of Grass types. It could potentially wall you out. Brick Break is a fair filler, though it has a better fighting move to use. Rock Tomb, same thing there is Sheer Force Boosted, we also get another move that are stronger. Scald, fair. Sword Stance, necessary for Kingler. Definitely, like, Sword Stance is something that really alleviates this Pokemon to become really, really dangerous. It means that even if the Pokemon is hit by resisted hit, at plus two, it could very well drop anyway. Um, rock Slide is a preferred Rock Move or Rock Tomb. X Sister is a fair filler. We also have Haze. Uh, it's kind of funny that it gets Haze because it means a defensive match that we kind of try to wall it out actually could be negated, and that's also a great thing. You can, of course, see Haze, of course, recovering all of your HP, which is always going to be pleasant. Amnesia, wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but it is a really interesting that guts get that. You get a good boost in special defense by two. Knockoff, always going to be relevant. Great filler overall to get with, of course, liquidation. Agility, which are usually the moves you, this Pokemon will have because it basically ensures that you can sweep the team from there on out. Agility kind of ensures that you don't have to worry about any Scarfer. Uh, any Scarfer that does have speed is, is not uh, around 115 base speed, so you definitely have to plan for that in mind. Other than that, Kingler is good to go. Um, Iron Defense, as stated here, all the setup moves kind of feel to get that. Superpower, which is your superb fighting stab. Um, while it doesn't necessarily help it all, the hybrid card does not negate the drop. Superpower is still a very strong move and are a great filler for this type of Pokemon. Icy Wind, same thing here. If you're going for hybrid cutter, being able to have Icy Wind could be very, very intimidating. Liquidation is stated. This is your bread and water when it comes to stab. Once it was Crab Hammer, now it is Liquidation. There really aren't that many things that actually switches into a Liquidation Boosted Shear Force Life Orb variant. It just hurts so much. And this is why this Pokemon is tremendously so dangerous, which was something it wasn't before. So while it's in PU right now in its moment here, it is very clear this Pokemon does really well in NU and RU and even up to UU because of this combination really just alleviates it because it is stronger than for likes of for alligator and consider how close they are in speed this really does make kingler very very dangerous to face off or even your switch into and out stop and transform always a good thing um it is ground based and always helps with the likes of electric type for example uh, body slam fair filler to get with double edge and then the last moves are in Bit of a mismatch because this Pokemon really doesn't get too many things. So we have Mimic here, don't you sad. We have Curse from Generation 2, which could be great for a possible, um, or what do you call it, Trick Room team. It is a slower Pokemon, while well, it isn't the slowest, it still can pull that off. And of course, Whirlpool, a bit of a lock in the Prudence, which could always be great if you want to set up and as you go for the setup moves. But usually, you just want to go for the offensive moves and get it with, of course, the likes of Liquidation. Um, body slam and stomach tantrum or superpower together with swole sense or agility you're good to go against most matchup and overall kingler is a very very dangerous threat and being able to set up in any way or aspect makes this pokemon very flexible actually probably one of the strongest pokemon in the pu and pretty much one of the strongest pokemon in overall tiers up to uu but just is kind of underrated like that because of well its history before it was created with liquidation in ultra sun and moon so with that said, we're going to, of course, talk about Crawdon, because these two are really close to one another. It's only the stabs in mind that kind of separates them. So, Crawdon, the crawfish, the, the, the sweet water crayfish. Mm. First and foremost, Dark Water, not a good defensive typing. Never has been, never will be. 
Immunity and Psychic, Resistance to Dark, Fire, Ghost, Ice and Steel and Water and have a plethora of weaknesses, both of them being very accessible to the cause of Volt U-turn course, so <laughs> that's not a good thing. Bug Electric is not a good thing to be weak to, of course, very fighting in grass. So overall, Dark and Water is not def defensively really a strong typing, however, it is a good offensive typing, which is why Crawlant is so interesting because it has so many things going for it, and of course we're going to talk about the stats first. Crawlant's stat distribution is actually one of the more interesting ones, because if you look at upon Kingler, it is very clear that Crawlant is inferior in stat distribution-wise, even though it is a mixed attacker for, well, for the hell of it really, but 6-3 in HP, yet yeah, it's higher than Kingler, 120 in attack is lower than Kingler, 85 in defense is also a lot lower than Kingler's. Special attack, however, is where it leaps a little bit at 90. That's 40 base power stronger than Kingler, which makes that special attack actually fairly usable. Another thing here, special defense are roughly the same to the both of them, you know, 55 here. And the speeds here, Crawdont are a lot slower than Kingler. 20 base speed loss means that this Pokemon, while looking like a, a wall breaker, are actually most of the time slower than the wall, which isn't necessarily a good thing. However, Crawlant has a lot of things going on with it. While it do share the same type of ability in Hyper Cutter and Shell Armor, we have Adaptability, which kinda resolve any type of issue that this Pokemon could have, because Adaptability means that you get double the stab bonus instead of 50% boost. This will mean the likes of Water and Dark Stab not only hurts a little bit more, it hurts a lot more because all of a sudden you, or if you're going for a potentially resisted hit, you still do the neutral normal damage. And this is something that has crawled on really, really strong throughout the generations, to be completely honest. In Generation 3, this wasn't a big deal. It wasn't, this didn't have the accessibility of that ability. Didn't get adaptability to Generation 5. Where with the rain teams in mind, Crawdon became a different being on its own. Simply hurting that harder really did make Crawdon a lot of more intimidation in mind. And Kingler was necessarily not on the plate due to this very reason. Now they got a similar abilities that are both are usable. So it all depends on if Crawdon's move pool necessarily are better. Because as it looks right now, there really aren't that many things that speak for Crawdon. It has a worse typing, it has worse stats, while a stronger ability it doesn't necessarily help when you aren't able to pull them off naturally. But at the same time, a secondary stab means you can hit somebody super effectively more often, and of course, knockoff is a very big thing for Crawdons. It is actually really interesting to see to get that, because adaptability boosted knockoff is one of the scariest things to be forced to be, forced to be taken. We also have Taunt, we have Sword Stance, which is always great, Crunch, Crunch was probably more reliant in Generation 5. Knockoff is always going to be your move in mind. Uh, Crab Hammer, uh, which of course is boosted by that ability, which is kind of one of the main reasons Crawdon was superb till Generation 6, 7. I mean, we have Ice Beam, which is a fair filler, which of course, as I said before, a really high special attack really does mean that Ice Beam Blister are usable. Air Lace, Brick Break, Avalanche from Generation 4. Consider it your slow anyway, Avalanche is actually a fair move to get. Slash Baby Slash Bomb, same thing here, hits the fairy types that could potentially force you out. Rock Slide, Excessor, Waterfall, which for the longest time was your main source of adaptability stat because it was more reliant than Crab Hammer. And of course, Crab Hammer is, while stronger, it has the chance to miss, and that's not necessarily a good thing. Skull is a fair filler. Liquidation has now been the number one move to use. Nature Power. Um, Really, Nature Power is really cool because due to the terrain moves in mind with the terrain extenders and whatnot, Crawdont can't get with Tapu Bulo or Tapu Coco, capitalize on Nature Power and get some moves out of that. And that's really, really, really interesting to see. Dark Pulse is also a fair filler. Knock off a second time. Yeah, that's my bad. <laughs> uh, Aqua Jet is one of the main reasons Crawdont is so good, to be completely honest. Aqua Jet, of course, means that you have a priority move, which is something Kingler is lacking. Kingler is faster though, so that's an aspect to it, but having Aqua Jet means that speed tier, while being an issue, is not always the issue and definitely not in late game. Switcheroo is always here, which is always going to be something to capitalize. You can go to Bandit Set or a Scoff Set, you can be able to alleviate yourself an item. Super Power, same reason as Kingler, really. It is a good filler because it hits things that you wouldn't naturally hit all that hard and just overall good neutral hit on the most things. Dig. 
CDIG is a thing. With electric types in mind, CDIG is one of those things that really stands out. It's able to knock out potentially electric type, though that said, liquidation usually does the job just fine, but having access to CDIG is just great. And of course, the last move, which is the kind of the move that really did Crawdon a lot better than Kingler for the longest time, and that is going to be Dragon Dance. It got Dragon Dance in Generation 4, and uh, it's always been an aspect, while the Pokemon is slow on its own, Having Dragon Dance means you boost your attack and speed by one, and you know, going for that twice, yeah, it's a thing though. This is really something that has Crawdon as a, one of the greatest Pokemons of all time. Uh, Dragon Dance, while not necessarily boosting, you know, it still has a low speed here, but it alleviates itself of having a different speed problem because it kind of enforces you to get both your boost and attack and, um, of course, speed. This is something Kingler is severely lacking, being forced to run even dual dance to be able to pull any of them up, or just decide on one setup. Dragon Dance kind of results too, while it also means that you're a sitting duck if your opponent does kind of call this off. Awkward yet do alleviate the city before uh, the, the bigger aspect of that kind of issue. So overall I would say that adaptability boosted Crawdon is one of the most scariest things to face off in the game, and Dragon Dance kind of result quite a lot with that in mind. So it comes down to this type of matchup, if um, the setup in between to get with dual stab is more than Kingler's overarching theme of being more sturdy overall, and of course with the liquidation in mind and life or boost, if it even can compare to actually Kingler in the first place. And I'm going to be completely honest here, I do believe Crawdon overarching theme of being able to go mixed and stuff like that really does make it a really really strong contender for one of the best Pokemon in the game. Kingler, however, it got a fair boost here in Liquidation. It really did resolve quite a lot, and having so many ways of setting up makes Kingler a very, very superb Pokemon in, well, the meta as a whole. But here's the thing though, and this is definitely something that I think most people are going to agree with me on. Dragon Dance resolves so much more for Crawdon than what Sword Stance Agility does resolve for Kingler. Whilst Kingler is a tremendous threat, adaptability boosted things really just makes Crawdon that much more stronger than Kingler. Kingler as a threat is very, very strong, and I'll even go so far and say that I can see Kingler do the same amount of work, if not even more of that work than Crawdon because of its soul typing of a water being defensively more active, but Dragon Dance kind of enforces that it doesn't necessarily have to take a hit at first play from Crawdon's side, and of course with Aqua Jet, it really just ensures that Crawdon is able to have one step ahead. I think Kingler needed to have some type of priority to be, even be a part of this kind of a matchup, but then again it wouldn't have been boosted as the same way as the death ability boosting Crawdon. Overall, I think um, Kingler is a tremendous Pokemon, it just isn't as good as Crawdon, but it's fun to see that Kingler got better, because it definitely needed that, and I was really happy just to talk about the both of them in this type of matchup, I think they both needed to be, well, getting a little bit of love. Uh, so that's it guys, I want to thank you of course for watching, what do you guys think, which of these two do you think is better, and you know, for what reason? Um, I think I'm gonna say something about Crawdon that I think is lacking in his Pursuit. I would love this Pokemon with Pursuit. I don't care about Sucker Punch necessarily, but Pursuit would have been... That would have been great. Uh, so anyway guys, thank you of course as always for watching and join us next time where we're gonna look at upon two Pokemons I wanted to compare for the longest time. Enjoy.